the acoustic. Good morning, everybody. Y'all stand and worship with us on this glorious Sunday. Cool Sunday morning. Let's do it again. 
So, um, we have any visitors? We got one, two. So we got uh, get a little gift for you, just to help uh, uh, remember your visit here. But um, also, we we would like all of our visitors um, and uh, members that haven't done it already to go ahead and text this number. Just text welcome, and uh, that's the church number. And uh, what it'll do is it'll uh, it'll uh, respond back and and uh, just have a record of your visit. So. Um, and eventually what we want to do is be able to get rid of the uh, iris and uh, so we want to be sure uh, all of our uh, existing members are also doing that too so um, birthdays and anniversaries we got any birthdays or anniversaries anybody get older no okay all right, so uh, before we move on, I wanted to remind everybody about the, um, about the uh, opportunities for service. So uh, everybody should have already gotten one of these and filled it out. So anybody need a copy? Everybody has one? You need one? All right. Anybody else need one? Alright, all right. so we'll leave them up here by the piano, so fill them out, and uh, you know, being able to serve for the Lord is, is always a blessing, and so we want to be sure that everybody gets an opportunity to do that, and, and my best advice is pray for what, what God has called you to do, and so you can serve, serve as God has, has led you, so... Next. So we'll go back to song of worship. Oh, ushers. I didn't say ushers. Okay. Well, the ushers come forward for times and offering. Thank 
in me and um, and so before we talk about I am in Christ we actually need to recap some of uh, Christ in me just to be sure that everybody's on the same page so Christ in me when I spoke earlier we talked about we need to be sure that we understand that we have a purpose right so we are not junk God doesn't make John. God made us in His image. And, uh, and because God doesn't make junk, He does have a purpose for each and every one of us. We may not know what that purpose is, but He knows what that purpose is. And then also, we need to acknowledge sin. So, sin is a part of our lives. And even from, uh, from the beginning of time with Adam and Eve, that... Uh, you know, there was sin, and it all started from when when Adam disobeyed God and, and ate from the, uh, 
from the tree of knowledge. And so, so we need to recognize the sin that is in our life. And, and we also need to be able to make, be humble and repent of that sin and ask for forgiveness. And then when, when we do that, then we can also ask Jesus to come into our heart. And when He comes into our heart, we're actually born again into our new life. And when God sees us with Christ in our heart, He sees Jesus. And so He doesn't see the dirty, rotten, nasty sin that we have. He sees Jesus. And then God sees us as pure as Jesus. So if you remember when I went through that example, I had the three, three jars of uh, water, right? And, and when we poured the, the jar, we'd start off with our our body which is full of uh, dark sin right and when we would then when I poured the, the jar from Jesus in then it became clear right so 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 that was a small recap so I actually went and I found found this uh, quote from Pascal uh, Pascal's a mathematician from the early from the mid 1600s and he was um, he was very much into science and, uh, and math. And uh, the interesting thing about Pascal was that uh, even though he was deeply rooted in science, he knew that there was a God. Um, if you talk to a lot of scientists today, many of them don't believe in God. But Pascal definitely did. And he had a lot of great quotes out there. And uh, this is one of them. Um, interesting thing, I saw a video the other day where a pastor went to a university and he had asked um, he had set up a camera and he had asked one of the students who created the laws of physics and the student he came back and he said he said well man created the laws of physics and so the pastor asked him he said he said uh, really so so for gravity, it was Sir Isaac Newton that uh, defined the laws of gravity, right? So before the apple fell on Sir Isaac Newton's head, was, it, was there gravity before then? And the student thought, he said, yeah, there was gravity before then. So at the time of Adam and Eve, was there gravity then? Well, of course there was gravity then. So then who created the laws of physics? So the student thought, and he said, well, must be God that created the laws of physics. And so, so Pascal, he definitely understood that. And, and he was definitely uh, a man of God. He would definitely share that when he could. And so, so the quote, it goes, There's a God-shaped vacuum in our heart of every man which cannot be filled by, or cannot be filled by any created thing, but only God the Creator, made known through Jesus. And so the thing that struck me with, about this quote was that, is that it's a God-shaped vacuum. And I never thought about it that way, but truthfully, he's absolutely right. There's a God-shaped vacuum in our heart. And so, so when we ask Christ to become a part of us, then, that, then we're asking Christ to come into our heart and fill that vacuum. All right, so I'm going to do a do a quick example. I'm going to ask Shannon to come up here, grab my water. All right. So, so I have here Christ, and I have here me. So. So Shannon, I'll let you go ahead and put uh, put Christ in me, and so and so as we go through, um, we have uh, we have an opportunity for us to accept Christ into our heart, and so um, what's wrong? There's something in there. What? There's something in there. What's in there? You got sin in you. So, so sometimes there's sin in us. So, and sometimes it's 
we need to remove that sin to allow Jesus to come into our heart. So go ahead and take it out. You can't take it out? That's right. We can't take the sin out, but Jesus can. Alright, thanks Shannon. Give her a hand. So I got a new me. So, so with Jesus, so with Jesus, He can help us remove our sin. And eventually, as that sin is removed from us, then Jesus fill our heart. And over time, we can now say that Christ is now in me. So, and so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll talk more about the next step, which is where uh, Christ, where we are in Christ. So let's take a look at John 1.12. So since this is a short one, we can all read it together. So, ready? But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, he gave the right to become a child of God. And so, and so with the, uh, so when we actually have uh, become a part of Christ, we actually become a child of God. And so with the, so with that, we need to also um, lose our old life. So we actually become born again. And so there's a, a lot of temptation to bring us back to our old life. And so that becomes a challenge, especially when we keep being reminded of what, what our old life is. And Satan's always there trying to remind us of our old life because Satan wants to get between us and God and separate us as much as possible. And so I have here some more reminders. These are some reminders that I've come across over the years. And so I'll share those with you. So, I don't want to be fat. So that's one that, that I've struggled with. And that's a reminder of, of my old life. And then also, I don't want to smoke. Right? I used to smoke a pipe and cigar years ago. And um, I don't want to drink alcohol. I had a problem with alcohol in the past. And, but now I don't. And then... I don't want to spend money foolishly. And I also don't want to be alone. And I used to spend a lot of time on Facebook. I'd come home from work and I'd be on Facebook for hours. And just wasting time, really. And then also email. I'd spend a lot of time reading email. A lot of it was just junk email that really had no meaning or purpose. And so, as I go through my life and I was trying to become more of a man that God has called me to be, then I found that I need to accept that I had those idols in my life and that I had, need, had to sh shed those idols from my life so I could become more, more like what God has called me to be. To be the child of God that God has called me to be. And so this is a quote that I came across um, a few months ago. So thoughts in our mind, if uh, God puts a thought in our mind, it's inspiration. If Satan puts a thought in our mind, it's temptation. If we put a thought in our mind, it's stupidity. And when I read this and thought about it, it's definitely true. And I see a lot of that in myself where... I'll go off and I'll do something on my own thinking that it's the right thing and most of the time it's not. And so what I've learned is that I need to take the time and pray and ask God what would He want me to do. So, so really what I want to do is I don't want to think about myself in the past. I want to think about what my future is, my future as a child of God. 
And so, so I don't want to be fat, but as a child of God, I'm going to shed some pounds for the Lord. Did I get it? Amen. Amen. All right. I don't want to smoke, but as a child of God, Jesus likes to fire my life. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. I don't want to drink alcohol. That's part of my past. But as a child of God, Jesus is my drug. I don't want to spend money foolishly. But we need to give to the saints. So this reminds me of a time when... So giving is a big part of, of what Jesus had preached. And uh, I, uh, I seem to... I keep coming back to the time where uh, Jesus was at the temple with the disciples, and uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, businessmen were coming into the temple, and they were paying their ten percent. They would walk in. Well, there was an old lady that came in, and she had two coins. That's all she had to her name was two coins, and she gave the temple those two coins. And so Jesus made a comment to the disciples that she is giving more than the rich men that were walking in. And that really it's not about tithing the 10%, it's about giving. So what is in your heart to give? In the case of the lady, she was given 100% because that's what it was in her heart to give. And we also should be, just like uh, Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians, we need to give to the saints. Right? Because we need to be sure that the money that we do give goes to a use that's for God's purpose. So, I don't want to be alone. But as a child of God, I'm going to build relationships and I'm going to serve others. So, as many of you know me, I, I like to do a lot of service. I like to be with people and try to help as much as possible. And uh, sometimes it's behind the scenes, especially when I'm doing sound. But um, but I'm always trying to serve, and I'm trying to think about how we how are we uh, sharing Jesus with others that need to need to learn about Jesus. And so this one was this one was interesting. So <clears throat> I don't want to spend all my time on Facebook, but as a child of God. I'm going to spend more time with the good book. And so I so over the past couple of years I've been spending a lot more time reading the scriptures, studying, and asking, what is God calling me to do? And I don't want to spend my time reading junk email. And that's definitely something that's been that I don't want to do anymore. And so as a child of God. I need to send more email. So I spend more time praying than what I have in the past. And so, so that really makes a, a big difference in my life is spending that time with God. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. So, so I went through and I was searching for um, scriptures to talk about our identity in Christ. What does it mean to be a part of Christ? And in in the New Testament, I actually came up with about 202 scriptures. And so, I'm going to scroll all the scriptures here. We're not going to read every single one of them. But we will talk about a few of them. And so... And so I'm also going to send this, uh, send my sermon notes to Glenda. So if anybody wants the sermon notes, be able to see all 202 verses, just send a note to Glenda. She'll be more than happy to forward them on. So, <clears throat> so when Christ is in us and we are in Christ, we get an opportunity to learn more about the Lord. And, and we also get to learn more about the love that God has shared with us. And so, as a result, we cannot be separated from the love of God. And then also, 
Also, when Jesus is a part of us and we're a part of Jesus, Jesus gets to see in everything that we do. He knows everything that we do, everything that we're thinking. And so Jesus becomes a friend of us. And, and we also need to become a friend of Jesus. And we also need to understand Jesus and be able to um, understand what, what has God called us to do and what is, what is our purpose in life, what is... What is our calling? How does God want us to be to be uh, a part of His perfect will? And so, I am a friend of Jesus Christ. And uh, as some of you know, through the past few week, few years at work, I've had a lot of stress. And so, and uh, the only way that I was able to get through that stress is to pray. And a couple months ago. Um, one of my coworkers had come to me and, and he had asked me, how did you deal with that stress? And, uh, and uh, he, he's from uh, India and he, uh, he, I already knew that he was not a Christian, but I wasn't afraid to tell him that it wasn't me that got me through those days. It was, it was uh, Jesus that helped me get through that. By prayer, I was able to have Jesus give me the peace that I need to get through those days. And then I also knew that that um, there are times when I need to be forgiven, right? Not just of my past, but also also today. I need to be obedient, and then sometimes I'm not obedient as I should be. And so, so when Jesus was on the cross, he he took those sins from for us, and he died for our sins. And so we need to be reminded occasionally that that Jesus is there for us, and he. And He made that sacrifice for our sins. And so we are all forgiven of our sins through Jesus. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about uh, there was uh, some uh, story of some Korean missionaries that had gone to, um, gone to uh, Afghanistan. And they were captured and they were... Uh, and they were uh, tortured by the Taliban. But the whole time that they were with the Taliban, they were always praying to God. And they became very close with God. And they were also asking for their freedom. And so freedom is another, is another benefit that we have as being a chi child of God. That we, we're free from our sins. We're free from, from some of the uh, persecution that's throughout the world. So we have all been set free. When I was in high school, I came across, um, there was a, uh, after church one day, we're, uh, a couple of uh, us uh, high school students were sit sitting around talking, and one of the girls, she was telling us about a time when she was in her bedroom, and, and um, she just started having all these bad thoughts in there, and her whole, whole world was turning dark, and she was struggling at that time. But she knew that that wasn't her and that she knew that, that it was Satan that was coming to attack her. So she prayed to Jesus and said, said, God, I need you to take this away from me. I need you to help me. And so Jesus, so as she continued to pray, her whole life just started to lighten up. And then that whole burden was taken from her. And she was able to, to now get away from that darkness and that she was able to overcome that. And she knew that with Jesus, she was protected. And so a lot of times I, I pray when I'm driving. And so I'll, uh, as I'm driving to work, I got about a 30 minute commute. So many times I'm praying about what's going to happen that day. And where, where do I need help? Um, where do I need that comfort? You know? And then also when um, also pray for those that need healing as well. But the other time, a lot of times I'll also be praying when, when uh, Kim or Casey's driving because I want us to be safe, right? <laughs> and so I need that comfort as they're driving to be sure that everything's going to be good. So with God, I am comforted. 
And so I mentioned earlier about uh, alcohol. And so, um, so when I struggled with alcohol, it affected a lot of my life, right? My, my family, my friends. And, um, and it got to the point where I was really struggling with it. I couldn't take it anymore. So I asked God to, to take that from me. And so I thought, well, it ought to be pretty simple. God just had me help me stop drinking, right? Well, it turned out, actually, uh, through God, I, was able, I started to become allergic to alcohol. And so whether I wanted to take a drink or not, I couldn't because I would get sick for days. And so even though I couldn't do it, God gave me the grace and the mercy to overcome my addiction. And so we talked about the quote from Pascal. So when uh, Jesus comes into our heart, it's filling that gap that's in our heart. And so and when, that, when Jesus fills that gap in our heart, then we now become more complete. And so we are whole, and we have, we have a, a piece of our life, a piece of our heart that's now full, and, and it is now 100% filled with Jesus. And that we're able to also take that and be able to share with others what, what God has done in our life. And so in Christ, I've been made complete. And so um, another time, I had, uh, a co-worker had asked me, how do I get through some of the difficult meetings and projects that are going on? And so I had told her, quite simply, I would pray before the meetings, and I would ask God to give me wisdom and courage to help me say the right things that God has called me to do. And so, and so she actually started, started doing this as well, and so... So I'm, I'm glad that I was able to help her out. But, but not only would I ask for wisdom, but I would also ask for uh, forgiveness of my sins. And so, so through Jesus, I'm made righteous. But then I'm also made pure. And so, when, so just like the example of Christ in me, when God sees me, He sees Jesus. And I'm completely redeemed. And so, next one. Um, and so, sometimes during those difficult times, we have those struggles, and we need to have those uh, those chains broken. And sometimes we, you know, just like my addiction with alcohol, I can't do it alone, right? And just like when Shannon was up here, she tried to remove the sin. She couldn't remove the sin, right? And so we need. We need Jesus and his, and his help to overcome and be the strength that we need. And because we're not able to always do it. So in all things through Him who strengthens me. And so we talked, uh, mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, when I'm, I'm driving, I'm usually praying. So as I'm praying, I'm also praying for those that need healing. So not just for myself, but for others. So we know that God is our healer and that, and that it could be anything from uh, cancer, it could be illness, or it could even, even be our spiritual healing that we might need. And so many a times I might be praying for somebody's heart to be changed, right? Somebody to come to know Jesus and be, be able to accept them. And if you look at the prayer that Todd had given us for 40 days where we pray, pray for the uh, for uh, uh, Jesus' heart for the lost, then that helps us understand uh, what do we need to do to to uh, feel for those people that, that are lost, right? And need that spiritual healing. And so by His wounds I am healed. And so as we go through the battles, it could be different kinds of battles, right? It could be a test that we need to take at school, or it could be a, uh, could be a project at work. It could, be, could even be when we're, um, if we're in sports, you're on, the, on that uh, ball field, and you're, and you're in that game, right? And so 
you can ask, a, ask for God to be with you during those times. And He can actually help lead you to victory. And there are many examples throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, that speak about the victory that God has, has delivered to those that have called upon His name. And... And so, also talk about, uh, this is probably one of the most important ones, we have the uh, Great Commission where God has called us to go out and share with others what, what God has done in our lives and help them to know Jesus Christ. So here in a couple weeks, Todd's going to kick off, um, kick off the uh, Who's Your One? And uh, we'll learn more about that uh, in the next couple weeks. But uh, basically, each and every one of us knows somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Whether it is somebody in our family, our friends, co-workers, but we all know somebody that doesn't know Jesus. And so who's your one is to help bring them to know Jesus. So I've been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. And so... Uh, so as I summarize, we'll have the praise band come up. So with all these different benefits of being a child of God, wouldn't we want to share those benefits with those others that don't know Jesus? And that they can also enjoy those benefits as well. Right? Because if we truly love them, we want them to know Jesus and be able to have, have all the things that are part of they're part of being a, a child of God. So we'll go back and we'll summarize one more time. So, we have Christ. We have me, right? So we remove the sin from our life. And we accept Christ in our heart. Christ is now in me. And so by So now we ask Christ where we want to be a part of Christ. So now we take me. So we got Christ in me and now I am in Christ. Lock and load. So we have all those benefits everything that we need for Christ in me and all, everything we need for I am in Christ. So, whether it is healing or whether it is strength, mercy, forgiveness, whether it's for protection that you pray for or that it's just that you need to become closer with God. As a child of God, Christ is there. And so I ask you, how can you be a child of God? What is in your life to help you be a child of God? And that you always remember that, that uh, God loves you. Altars open.
Yeah, that's something new. I don't know how they did that.